between 1946 and 1964, the baby boom generation is reaching retirement age. By the year 2030, the number of Americans over the age of 65 is expected to be more than 71 million. By that time, one in every five people will be considered an older adult. And it will seem to have happened in the blink of an eye. Millions of baby boomers turn 65, dramatic economic and social changes will undoubtedly occur. But are America's communities prepared for what some have predicted will be a silver tsunami? Led by the National Association of Area Agencies on Aging and funded by a grant from the MetLife Foundation, five prominent national organizations joined forces to determine America's aging readiness by surveying 10,000 local governments. The survey found that only 46% of American communities have begun to address the needs of the rapidly increasing aging population. We met with stakeholders of some of those communities that are preparing for this aging explosion to find out just what they've been doing. We spoke with specialists in aging, local government leaders, as well as service providers. But we also listened in on a focus group of older adults discussing their concerns about aging. Ah, older adult, I never thought I'd be calling myself that. But it's a funny thing, I'm 60, but I still feel like I'm 20. Well, I'm too old, I'm in the 90s, I'm 94. It's good to get old. We learned many things from the focus group discussion, but one of the most surprising facts was that everyone said they wanted to stay in their homes and communities as they age. But most homes have been designed for adults raising children, and even for young parents, steps of any kind can be difficult when pushing a stroller. For older adults, the design of their home and landscape often determines their ability to remain there or necessitates their relocation. Gerontologist expert Dr. Monica White shared her insights as to some of the things we should consider when making the decision to age in place. We are living longer and longer. One of the things that we find is that people want to stay where they are. So what does it take to enable people to age in place? Take a look around your home. Do you have a bathroom downstairs in case you have an upstairs and you can't make it up there? Are your doors wide enough for a wheelchair and a walker? Look at your kitchen. Are the counters really high? Can you reach up to your cupboards without a ladder? Those kinds of things. When I designed our master bath edition, I realized we planned to stay here quite a long time. And in order to make sure that, that our bathroom was accessible and it would accommodate a wheelchair, we made the door oversized. And we have provided a nice, generous entry into the shower. And as you'll notice, the shower has a, a zero curb face. It's quite generous in size. And we've added a nice bench seat to use our hand shower. And very easily get over to the rain shower. And as, as time goes on, we'll probably add some, some additional grab bars. So we know that most home and building design in the past has been tailored to a narrow range of physical abilities. But now, okay. there are some visionary so architects who are incorporating the, the innovative edition. concept of universal zero, design uh, into their little early little planning okay, stages. This, this. The term universal design is defined as the including of features that enable people of all ages and abilities. Gerontologist Dr. John Pinus, policy and planning professor at USC, explains. I think the whole community has something to gain from employing principles of universal design because they apply to all kinds of settings, whether it's a commercial building, a residential house, the community at large. And what you would see is a community that works better for everyone. The principles basically are that it should be accessible, it should be supportive, it should be adaptable, it should be flexible, and it should work for almost everybody. Local governments are well positioned to examine building and zoning codes, as well as encourage renovators of older structures and developers of new construction to utilize the concepts of universal design. An important catalyst and data resource in achieving these and other goals for more livable communities is the Local Area Agency on Aging. May Carpenter of Westchester County, New York has more. The most important role I think that an area agency on aging can play 
um, with elected officials and other stakeholders in creating livable communities is to share data, share research objective information that we systematically collect all the time in terms of what people are asking for, in terms of their needs, in terms of the problems that they're facing. Uh, an example would be from our needs assessment survey. That information has been collated by zip code, uh, by demographic data, so we can tell a mayor what seniors are asking for right within zip codes in their community. At a certain point with some people, the, the tragedy is that they're not allowed to drive, they can't drive, they need transportation. Will I be able to get out and go to the movies? Will I be able to see the theater that I love? Many traffic signals need to be readjusted. Street traffic can be overwhelming, and pedestrians, not just seniors, cross the streets at their own peril. So this city has been revising traffic crossing signals to display the number of seconds a person has to cross, and at some intersections, increasing the time to do so. In addition to making safer streets and sidewalks, several types of transportation services are geared toward the city's disabled and older population. Subsidized taxi and metro bus services, free transportation provided by a dial-a-ride shuttle, and a new service that transports seniors by volunteer drivers and private vehicles all make mobility easier. Senior citizens have experience, and that should be valued. So I think it's important that seniors take part in, in government at whatever level. Older residents also cite opportunities for civic engagement with community-based cultural and healthy living programs as key elements in maintaining a meaningful lifestyle. Abby Land, mayor of West Hollywood, spoke to us about those concerns. Seniors actually help start West Hollywood. Probably about 30% of our population is seniors. It's probably growing because there's many of us who are booming into that uh, as we speak. So as a community, we've always been committed to ensuring that we had the right services. A postman alert program can be a safety net for anyone who may become ill, injured, or otherwise unable to communicate. A pileup of mail is often an indication something is wrong. We want them to be able to age in place. We want them to really be able to remain a vital part of our community. We do a lot of programming to really make sure that seniors can stay in place. The Local Area Agency on Aging is the community resource for locating program and service providers, such as Jewish Family Service oh, of Los Angeles. Good, I will take it. The LIFE program it is a senior it. empowerment yeah. program, and everything that we do is driven by the needs of the community. We provide information and referrals in our office. I do crisis intervention as a social worker. We have many volunteer opportunities. Senior talk line, clear speak. May I help you? We engage more active volunteers in helping the more frail seniors that live in our community. We do friendly visiting, we have a telephone support program, we have a fall prevention program, and a lot of activities that promote uh, socialization and lifelong learning. And now slowly, let's lower halfway down. Hold and reach for the toes, fingertips towards the toes. Good, nice Benefits of yoga to elderly and seniors is it keeps their bodies flexible and strong, keeps them active, keeps them within a community, and also allows them to kind of play and maintain a youthful energy and, and try new things even at an advanced age. I try to gear it towards the majority of the individuals, but what I found is that seniors who have been practicing yoga for several decades can keep up even more so than the younger students. The city of West Hollywood has been always committed to adapting with the times, and there's a new term called livable cities that a lot of people talk about. In our city, we are part of what's called a naturally occurring retirement community. As we age, many of us are choosing to remain in our communities. Often this creates a phenomenon referred to as a naturally occurring retirement community, also known as a NORC. A NORC is one of a growing arsenal of aging in place models. A NORC is basically it's a neighborhood with a high concentration of older adults. People have aged in place or they're migrating inward to a neighborhood and it just happens to have a lot of seniors. Anyone can live in a NORC. It can be young people, it can be families, but a lot of seniors happen to live in that area. So you really have to think, okay, I'm going to be old, I'm going to live a long time, how can I do it well? For communities who have not yet begun to think what's next, I would say stop and take a breath 
and recognize that what's next is right in front of you because really your resources are you and everyone around you. My vision for aging in place and particularly for baby boomers uh, is that you live in a community that values you and you can value your community by giving back. You know, we spend um, most of our lives being surprised about our age. We kind of experience it, oh my gosh, I'm 16, or I'm 28, or my gosh, I'm 42. How did that happen? Imagine uh, saying I'm 87 or 96. Uh, we are continuously surprised by age. Aging should not be a surprise. It should be a plan. I am planning to age in place, hopefully just not today. <laughs> you still try to keep going, and the more you keep going, the older you get. <laughs> As we have seen, creating more livable communities means we need to take a fresh look at existing policies and services through eyes that may be older than our own. Housing, zoning, transportation, safety, health and supportive services, culture, lifelong learning and opportunities for civic engagement all play key roles in building livable communities for all ages. We all have roles to play and the time to act is now.